In this video, you're gonna learn everything you need to know to create Amazon product photography that sells the maximum amount of products on Amazon. Hi guys, my name is Danny Carlson and I'm founder of Kenji ROI. We've been doing Amazon product photography for more than five years now. We've done more than 2000 products on Amazon. So we figured out some pretty good resources and ways of doing things that I think you guys are really gonna like today. So first things first, what is the goal of Amazon product photography? How do you know if you're winning or you're losing? Well, very simply, the goal is to drive more sales on Amazon, is to maximize the amount of customers that see your product that end up purchasing, right? Because if you're not maximizing that, it's like having a funnel, right? If you have a funnel and then you have a bunch of leaks in the bottom of your funnel, you're just kind of wasting a bunch of that attention, a bunch of those eyeballs from the shoppers, and you're not turning that into revenue, into sales. So Amazon product photography is all about maximizing that and making your funnel as efficient as possible to increase the amount of sales and what that does is it drives Amazon's flywheel so the flywheel of Amazon the more sales you get the higher your keyword rankings the more people see your product the more people that buy your product that is the flywheel right so we just want to keep pumping more sales in so that we get even more sales through Amazon's algorithm now let's talk a bit about how product photography actually differs from other forms of photography. So a portrait photographer is not necessarily going to be good at product photography. They are totally different skill sets. So a few things that are different about product photography, first of all, is the lighting. So lighting is everything in product photography. You can take really, you know, fairly low resolution camera photos with amazing lighting and it's gonna look better than someone with a $10,000 camera and just doesn't understand lighting. And if you don't understand that in product photography, it's really easy to make your product look blotchy, um, it looks really unappealing, and an unappealing product photo gets a lot less clicks, gets less people viewing it, and it gets less sales. And a really good product photographer also really understands the angles. There's certain angles that typically make a product look more flattering, and then other angles that make it look less flattering and maybe you can't even tell what's going on in that angle. So just understanding the angles is really important. And then finally, the lenses and camera gear is a little bit different, right? There's certain types of lenses you're gonna use for product photography that you know maybe are different from the other lenses that look really good for portrait photography. So a little bit different there. And then what's unique specifically about Amazon product photography? So the big difference here is that Amazon has a very specific rules, right? So you can only upload seven images at a time and then there's a little plus button where people can see two more images for a total of nine images. But really there's seven main images that people are gonna see. And out of those images, one of them in particular is the one main image that's gonna show up on search results pages and in your ads. So that one's even the most important. So just within Amazon's parameters, you really have to optimize your photos to show off the key information about your product because ideally you're showing everything a customer needs to see in order to make that buying decision with only the photos. So let's just hop over to a, um, an example here. So guys, there's lots of studies done on this that the human brain is evolved to process images much faster than reading text. So just based on, you know, I'll let you guys look this up if you want, but based on the scientific research done here, okay guys, so check this out right here. So sentence reading versus image processing, according to this is in between eight times and 577 times faster looking at images. And that makes sense, right? Because the human brain has evolved for millions of years in order to process visual imagery, but only for thousands of years when it comes to actually reading text. So we wanna take advantage of that and show all the most key pieces of information that customers need to make that buying decision with only the images. And we do that in a way where something called key info optimization. So I do go deeper into this concept in other videos, but it's just important to understand for now that key info optimization is the number one most important part of an Amazon listing photo set. And it's also one of the biggest key differences between Amazon photos and other types of product photos. You need to show all of the most key information that a customer needs to make that buying decision super, super quickly or else people just click onto the other listings. Because guys, Amazon is a comparison shopping engine and your opportunity to sell that customer is a really, really short window. So like on this product listing, if someone got to your listing, they can immediately see 
six or seven products directly underneath your product listing. Just scroll down more. There's another section here with other products, another section with more products. Quite often there'll be an advertisement showing up right here, just below the add to cart button. So you really only have a very short window of opportunity to show the customers that key information and get them to buy your product instead of clicking off to someone else's. So that begs the question then, what is the perfect shot list for an Amazon product? Well, it comes down to different types of images. We'll talk about that first. So firstly, there is the main image. That's your one with the white background that shows up on search results and shows up you know, everywhere people can click on your product like on your Amazon ads. The second type of the image is infographics. So these are typically um, some kind of icons and graphics and text on the screen to more easily communicate things very quickly that are difficult to show in an image. And then there's also the lifestyle images. So that's actually showing your product in use, ideally with a model that's actually showing some of the main benefits of your product happening. And that's really useful for situations where you need to actually show an action of your product in action so people understand what it does. Now let's break down each one of these image types a little bit here. So the main image, it needs to have a white background according to Amazon Terms of Service. It should be filling up the maximum frame. So you have, in most categories, a one-to-one -one frame, so it's a square. You wanna be filling up the most of that space as possible because if you're not, then your product's gonna show up smaller than everyone else's on the search results page. It's hard to see, it's less appealing to click on, and you're just kind of wasting the space there. Next, you wanna take it at a really flattering angle. So some products are gonna look really unflattering at a top view angle. So especially with some products, it can make your product appear two dimensional and you can't really tell what your product is because it just looks flat, right? So for most products, the best angle is gonna look somewhere around 15 degrees horizontally and 15 degrees vertically. So you can clearly see the three dimensions of the product, but it's not at some weird offside angle. And it should also be abundantly clear what your product is. So it's a common mistake of people to take it at an angle that yes, it fills up the entire screen and it's really visible, but it's not really easy to tell what the product is. And then finally, it should stand out on the search results page. So really good lighting, consider using some graphic reflection effects or shadow effects to make it stand out even more. But really, it's all about having a good angle and make sure the lighting just really makes it pop against that white background. And then the best practices for your infographics. So you don't wanna clutter it. The biggest mistake that I see people make is putting too much information on one single image. You want one to three pieces of key information on that image. And going back to key information optimization, it's really important that it actually is key information because so many people just try to cram every possible detail about their product in the images and half of that stuff your customers don't really actually care about. Right, so you have to ask yourself, is this information actually important to my customer? And then you gotta prioritize the most important information to your customer in your infographic images. And that kind of ties into my next point, which is your text and icons need to be large and easily readable on a mobile screen. Because so many people today shop on Amazon's mobile app and you gotta test it out. If you open up your image on a small mobile screen, can people still easily read it without having to pinch to zoom in? So here's an example of a good infographic image. There is a small limited amount of information and if we scrolled out, so it was the size of mobile screen, you can still see what's going on right there. And the whole point of infographics is that they're easily digestible. So icons and just other creative ways of conveying that information visually can really speed up the time that it takes someone to digest that information. And then we have lifestyle images. So these are really great for showing things that are not very easily shown through text or through other methods. So some things are just much easier shown if you have a model actually like opening up part of the backpack or showing a feature of your product and actually showing it in use. And that's good for not only just showing that, but also to get your customers to be able to visualize what it's like to actually own your product, right? If they can visualize someone else receiving the main benefits of the product, then they can reasonably visualize what it's gonna be like. And that's exactly why if you're using stock images for your lifestyle images, you have to be really, really careful to make sure it looks exactly realistic or else it doesn't have that same effect. You know, someone looks at a fake looking lifestyle image, they can't really tell, like they don't really trust it. They're like, well, it kind of looks like it's that size in the image, but I know it's fake, like it's clearly fake, so I don't really know, like I can't trust that as a reference for what the product is actually like. And then if at all possible, you wanna use a model that is the same customer demographic as your actual customers. So if there's 20 year old women who are buying your product, you wanna use a 20 year old woman as a model. So here's a simple but good example of a lifestyle image here. You can see this is an ID maker in the background, and then we clearly have 
an ID that has been printed by this ID maker, it just very clearly shows what the product does in its natural environment. And one of the biggest mistakes people make with lifestyle images on Amazon is they just show the product um, just kind of posed and they're not actually showing any key information. So let me show you guys an example of that. So you can see in this image right here, we're showing the entire stash box and you don't really see anything different than the main image, right? You're showing exactly the same stuff like, hey, I already kind of know what comes in this product. There's no additional information that I'm now seeing in this image. Same with this one right here. Like, yes, there's a good looking model right there, but that's the whole point of the image is about the model. It has nothing to do with the product. It's the exact same angle that we've already seen a few times of this stash box, and there's no additional information thrown in there. So always think through your shot list. What piece of key information am I showing in this image? And then make sure that you're really focusing on that instead of just uh, putting a fancy model in there and trying to make your product look cool. And then finally, who's involved in putting together an Amazon product photography shot list? So there's, I mean, obviously you can do a lot of this yourself, but these are the typical roles that you're gonna see and that you see inside of my agency that's been doing this since 2016. So firstly, you have the shot list writer. That's the person who is researching the product and understanding what is all the key information and key benefits and key product features I need to show within the shot list. And then writing out a shot list with the different image types, the white background images, the infographics and lifestyle images, and matching those together with all of that key information. And then we also need a copywriter who's gonna write the copy for the infographics. That might be the same person as a shot list writer, but ideally it's someone who understands the art of sales copywriting. Um, that's copywriting with a W, not copywriting as an intellectual property. But sales copywriting, for those who don't know, is essentially the psychology of sales in the written word. And then obviously you have your photographer. So there's a studio product photographer. You wanna work specifically with a product photographer who understands product photography lighting, not just a typical model photographer or something like that. And then also maybe you might have to find a separate lifestyle photographer if you're also doing a lifestyle shoot. Photographers are generally specialized, so you wanna find one that has the right experience for the shoot that you have. Next up, you need a graphic designer, someone who can create your infographics with the icons and all the graphic elements and everything like that, and make your product appear like a professional brand, not someone on Fiverr who's gonna do it for $5 and just, you know, they get it done for cheap, but it's gonna give a cheap overall brand perception of your brand in general. And then putting that all together, your budget's typically gonna be somewhere around 700 to 3,000 dollars kind of depending on how detailed you need to be and if there's lifestyle shoots if there's stock photos and things like that so a typical one is going to be about seven hundred dollars to um, fifteen hundred dollars now let's move on to some good amazon photo examples so i'm going to compare for the same product here we have a stash box i need to compare a good one versus some ones that really could use some help here so first up we have this one here so they have a fairly appealing angle of their product it's pretty clear what it is. Uh, they can see the grinder, right? Like what they're doing with the grinder is they have the cap off and the cap on, so you can clearly tell what it is. If you only had the cap on, you can't tell it's a grinder, right? So they're thinking about that right there. And the lighting, you can tell they're using some diffused light. There's no really weird light spots. It could be improved a little bit, but they're doing a fairly good job. Everything is nice, uh, evenly lit, and looks good. But you can see some examples right here. This is a great place to compare how you're doing against the competitors because down here we have some really poor examples of lighting. Like this one is a very unflattering angle of the product and you can see like weird shadows. It just doesn't look as appealing as some of the other options, right? Like the lighting on this, on this product just doesn't look good. Okay, and let's compare that with this one right here. So you can see the lighting here is really bad. You can see this weird shadow coming off the, the buckle right here and there's big light spots all over everywhere, right? There's kind of these blotches of light. And the reason for that is that they're not using a light diffuser. So light diffusion without going into it too much essentially is the softening and the spreading out of the light. So you can see here in this really basic graphic, this light box is diffusing the light. And what that's doing is the light hits this white paper and then it spreads it out very evenly so you don't have these weird blotches. Without this, if you just had only this light right here, it would just be a really kind of thin, narrow, powerful layer of light right here that would be creating a weird spot and then it would be distributing some other light kind of willy-nilly everywhere. So this just really smooths everything out and you can tell that they weren't using that in this photo right here right these weird blotches awkward shadows um the angle is really not very flattering either you have 
a couple different angles going on. This angle of this can doesn't match the angle of everything else in the image. And you can see it again here, right? We have this really weird blotch of light coming straight down the front of this bottle. It's kind of weird three blotches coming off of here. Just didn't do a very good job of the lighting. Whereas these guys are doing a great job, right? The text is very easily readable. There's not too much text on the screen, so it's easy to understand. And it's really easy to understand what the product is. They've broken out every single piece. So it's super clear to understand what the product is, what the benefits are in a very short amount of time. And here's an example of not so good infographic. The text is much too small to easily read on a mobile screen. If I zoom out here, you can see what I mean. It would just be impossible to read any of it without pinching to zoom in a few times to read that super small text. And there's just a lot of wasted space, right? It would have been really easy for them to make that text larger. They just didn't do it for whatever reason. Also, the graphic style is a little bit all over the place. I can see at least three different fonts that they're using across everything and different colors, no continuity and uh, just generally not a very good job on the graphic design. So there it is, guys. That's pretty much everything you need to know about Amazon product photography. If you're looking for someone to do your Amazon product photography for you, you can reach out to Kenji ROI. We've been doing it since 2016, and we can do it for any types of products on Amazon. So hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Take some care and go out and make some sales.